Hello everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today with our sponsor, Christina from Needlework Studio Canada, I am going to dye 200 grams of Knit Picks Stroll Roving. This roving has the same fiber content as the stock yarn that we love. It is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, and I've only ever dyed this once. I tried hand painting it for my Spin Into Gold series at the end of, goodness, at the end of 2017. I find this fiber also really, really smooth and it feels like it could stick to things pretty easily. If you'd like to learn more about this roving, you can find an affiliate link to the Knit Picks website in the video description. As for this luscious, soft roving, what am I going to do with it? Well, we you know, if you've watched any of my videos or live streams, you know that I love dip dyeing yarn. But I really haven't done that a lot with roving. I've dip dyed it, I've, I've dip dyed some braided roving that was crocheted into a chain, but I found it was a little heavy and I was really nervous about stretching and damaging the fibers. So this won't be dipped in the sense it'll be coming up and down, but it is going to be dipped in that I'm going to slowly add one end of the fiber into the pot. Maybe not so slowly if it seems like it's soaking up color really fast. Um, but so then maybe, or hopefully, we'll have a greater um, depth of saturation at one end of the fiber than the other. At least that's the plan. But as we know, when I'm trying something for the first time, sometimes things work exactly as I intended, and sometimes they don't. That is part of the beauty of just going for it and playing with color. I debated whether or not I should try pre-soaking this roving internally for a while. If I were to try to add it to the pot dry, it would be a little more unwieldy. I might need to use like a second hand with some tongs to help it sink in, but it would lead a, give us a little more variation of color throughout the roving, which would be cool. However, since this is superwash, I'm expecting colors to start striking at least to the outside of the roving fairly quickly, and so I want things to be able to go into the pot easily, so that's why I decided in the end to pre-soak it um, in just plain tap water for at least 30 minutes. In the dye pot, I have 16 cups of water. I'm going to add one, two, three four tablespoons of white vinegar. I think it's 16 cups of water. There's a chance I miscounted and it's 20. Either way, four tablespoons of vinegar should definitely be sufficient for us to absorb this color that we are gonna try to create. Today we are gonna go for a purple using some older stock solutions that I have on hand. I have a beautiful crashed out stock solution of Dharma Peacock Blue and I have just shy of a quarter cup of that color but since this is not yet hot I am going to take this add it to the jar slurry it around and get a bit more blue into the pot I'm going to do that one more time I'm actually going to take it to the side and shake it this is a color that dissolves really, really well in hot water. Uh, less well in cool, um, as you can see by the fact that it crashed out. Now, I have an even older dye stock that is a 1% stock of some jacquard pink um, right here. And I'm going to add two quarters, two quarter cups approximately. I am curious if one color might overshadow the other or what. But let's take a look. And one other thing I am curious about is whether or not we created something that might break. Um, because certainly this isn't one molecule that's purple. We have a mixture. And okay, that is sort of um, like a bit of a blurple. It's not showing up a ton on the paper towel because it is pretty dilute. So I think I want to add a little more pink, actually. 
actually. Yeah, I think I'm going to add another half cup of this pink. Hopefully that doesn't overpower the blue too much. Um, now, I love a good blurple, but I do want there to be some pink in here. But in general, I think that pinks are a lot more um, dilute than, say, like a red or something. But I'm excited. Oh, yeah. We definitely, definitely have a purple now. But I am really, really excited. So let's let this heat up, and then we'll start slowly dipping our roving into it. I did squeeze out most of the liquid from the fiber. But you can see in that process, some of it is sticking to my hands which is one thing that makes us spin really easily, but another thing that made me say, oh, like, it's sticky. <laughs> but I actually want to reduce the heat a bit. And now we're going to just start slowly adding, um, since I'm doing 200 grams of fiber, um, I have the, the 200 gram skeins held together. And slowly, bit by bit, I'm going to just keep adding it. And you can see that, you know, the color isn't going on super evenly um, right away. So just imagine what it would do if the fiber were, um, the fiber were dry. But actually, is this starting to clear almost already? I sort of need to have like a tongs moment, maybe. Do, do, do. It's hard to tell. Oh no, there's still a lot of color there. Okay. Started getting a little worried. I now have the rest of the yarn in one hand. Um, so that way, hopefully, I can move around and get in here. But maybe we are starting to clear because this is definitely, definitely paler. Um, I have no idea about the balance of this. Um, I have no idea, you know, how much more color there's going to be at one end than the other. But certainly we are creating some kind of gradient here. And for that, I am very, very excited. I mean, even just looking here at the pot, you can see we might have some white and we have a deeper purple. I don't think I observed any breaking. Um, it's possible that there could be some breaking in there. I didn't see it myself. Um, I'm gonna sort of lower that some more, but you know, again, you can see that I definitely have some fiber that has stuck to my hands just from touching it with my hands, not even like um, anything rough because my hands are actually fairly smooth right now. But, yeah, I am so excited with this. So, so, so excited. Um, phew, I was really afraid I was going to be stuck or something. But I had the pan that I was pulling from on the ground, and this just worked great. So now we've got the heat on low. I am going to cover it, and I'm going to leave this to sit for, oh let's say 15 minutes. The 15 minutes are up. I just removed the lid and let's see. It looks like we have added all of our color into our fiber. Just gently pulling aside. Yep, looks like that is all in the fiber. Now what's cool is that there was definitely, you can see here some maybe bleeding of color from the darker section into the lighter section, which makes me believe that some of the color maybe soaked into that first roving, but hadn't necessarily bound yet. Now, I am totally okay with this because these little patches of color will blend out out as this is spun, but I am going to let this cool in the pot for a while and then we'll remove it so it can cool completely so then we can eventually wash it. Christina, I hope that you are just as excited about your roving as I am. I sort of wish that I could spin this myself and I have a feeling I will be re repeating this very, very soon. Oh yeah, and how about that purple? 
we've got a really sort of perfect eggplanty purple here. I love it. There is still some warmth in our fiber, but I want to use the pot for another project. So I am going to carefully remove the roving. You can see that there's a bunch of liquid that went into this pan from where I removed it. But now you can see, well, there's some bubbles, um, but our dye bath is in fact clear. So now I'm gonna let that roving cool completely before we wash it. All right, Christina, let's see how this pile of roving does in the water. It looks a little cloudy because of the aerator on the tap, but it is lukewarm. Um, this is super wash. I'm not super worried about felting, but I am worried about disrupting the integrity of the fiber too much. But look at that. The color seems to be in our roving. Um, I don't want to rub and disrupt it. I'm adding a tiny bit of dish soap. Um, so that way, if there is any bleeding, this is when we might see it. I'm doing some no-nos by letting the water run on the fiber, but we definitely have some sort of gradient. I'm not really going to be able to make heads or tails of it until we, um, that's great, until it's dry, but certainly we got some beautiful, beautiful purple. Um, and yeah, I'm not seeing any bleeding. So now I'm going to go ahead and rinse out the soap. We'll hang this up to dry and I'll come back once it's dry so we can take a look at how well this dipping technique worked on this stroll roving. Oh, you guys, this worked better than I had hoped. We have a reasonably balanced gradient here and Christina, I really, really hope that you're gonna love this as much as I do. The color, while it was wet, felt very eggplanty, like a very deep blue purple. And now we've definitely got a purple, but it's more on the pink side. Um, you know, you, def you definitely wouldn't call this pink, but you definitely can feel all those fuchsia and pink tones in there. One thing that's a little subtle but there are definitely a few different hues in here. You can see some areas that are definitely a little more pink and a little more blue. I would say that we absolutely have some breaking going on here. Now, I suppose it's possible some of the blue dye had it dissolved completely and so it dissolved later and we could have ended up with some blue patches there because of an uneven solution. So that wouldn't technically be breaking, but maybe this is a mixture that we need to explore later, or we need to start exploring mixtures of acid dyes to see if they break or if the colors absorb at a similar rate. Clearly, if there is breaking, it wasn't extreme because we see sort of like purple throughout at different shades, but the colors that we have up here, oh wow, that looks fairly blue. Um, the colors that we have up here sort of bound because this was next to some of the darker sections. And, you know, the, the roving that we first put in soaked up a bunch of liquid, but that doesn't mean all the dye bound right away. So when you had the roving next to it, some of it bled off. I think that if it were a skein of yarn, I might feel a little frustrated with the color rubbing off a little bit. However, when you are spinning this, these really shallow sections of purple are gonna blend with the white and sort of separate out. And so you're gonna see sort of a more pastel lavender through there. I just took a minute and I fluffed up this side a bit. I think one of the problems with dyeing this superwash roving is that it's not super, I mean, it is sticky and that it like will stick to your hands and so smooth. But I think that because the fibers have been smoothed out and have a little less crimp, it separates from itself a bit easier. So whereas some other roving might stay together, here we're seeing it's already wanting to separate a bit into sections, which is still definitely spinnable. It just, 
in my opinion, doesn't look as pretty as some 100% wool roving that I've done. Now, as for this fiber, what could you do with it? You could spin 100 grams onto one bobbin, 100 grams onto the other, starting at the darkest end and working towards the lightest end to make a gradient, ply them together. Or you could do a really long gradient with 100 grams and then break the other one apart and so you have a more repeating gradient on the other side and then ply them together. There are so many different yarns that you could create with this and that's just really, really exciting for me. I love my spinning wheel, but you do not need a big piece of equipment if you wanna start learning how to spin. Drop spindles are fairly inexpensive and there are a lot of great tutorials out there on YouTube that taught me how to start spinning. And I used the drop spindle a lot over the span of a year before I received the wheel as a present. And there are even some really great tutorials on how you can make your own drop spindles with household items. And so really all you need is some roving and you can start giving it a whirl. Haha. <laughs> oh man. Sorry, that was a really bad joke. Christina from Needlework Studio Canada, thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of Dye Pop Weekly. I really appreciated this chance to challenge myself with a new, to me, roving dyeing technique. And I know that this is something that I want to explore further, both in terms of the slowly dipping the roving into the pot, but also playing around more with this nitpick stroll roving. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz. And if you would like to learn more about sponsoring an episode of Dye Pot Weekly, having me design an experiment with you in mind, and then you get some of the yarn or roving that I dye in that video, check out the sponsorship listing from the Chemnitz Creations Etsy store. I'll have that both in the video description and the iCard. And if sponsorship isn't from you, there are hundreds of other skeins of hand-dyed yarn that have been featured in past or upcoming Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube videos. So make sure you check it out. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel, give this video a like, and leave a comment below to let me know what you think. Thank you so much for watching, everyone.